I'm Lee Dickinson, here's my 7 in 7. Really important that we ascertain whether a business owner is truly focused on growth or whether actually they say they want growth but really they're managing their cash or they're managing for earnings or, or maybe it's just an optimistic, uh, opportunistic development. This document shows you the difference in behaviours and actions that you'll take if you really are investing for growth. I'm a growth coach, I focus solely on businesses, positive people that want to get from where they are to a much better position. So if you're investing for growth, you will be aggressive in your marketing, you will be aggressive in your pricing, you will be looking to upgrade key positions in your staff, and you'll definitely be looking for better systems. USP. Without a USP, you have no distinction. If you have no distinction, you can't stand out from the crowd. Best example I can give you, 1972 car advert. Well, really, it was a tyre advert for Pirelli. Car sweeps down the road, it's thrown it down, it's six o'clock at night, it's dark, and a car screeches to a halt. An old man, standing by the roadside, starts tut tutting, and the caption comes up, Sir Robert Mark, ex-commissioner of Metropolitan Police. So an old copper, really, selling his time to promote tyres. Interesting thing is the advert's message, and the message was this. Fact, it's a steel-belted radial. Benefit, it's a stronger, sturdier tyre advantage for safer driving for you and your family and that's why that tyre became a top seller because of the perception that it was for safer driving for you and your family that's a USP every business needs one now let's get that done first and let's be clear about what the advantage is because the next thing that we'd look at my number two out of seven is having the five ways chassis five ways is the most significant way of driving revenue and profit number one in the five ways is lead generation so let's call that marketing Number two is sales conversion. So how do we get those leads and referrals converted into customers? Number three is the average sale value we can achieve on each deal that we win. And number four is how many times they buy. If we multiply the number of customers by the average sale value by the number of transactions, we get revenue. Now we've got those four of the five. The fifth one is profit, the profit margin. Let's multiply the revenue by the profit margin and we get our final net profit. The thing is, we can intervene in five ways. There are 388 different strategies for the five ways. All we need to do, all we need to do, is to trial, say, half a dozen, test and measure which ones work best, then divest from the ones that are not working very well, but plough the money into the ones that work very well. We just found out what's going to drive our revenue forward. If we take a 10% modest improvement in each of those five ways, we'll grow our revenue by 46% and our profits by 61%, so vital. But let's have the USP first so that what we're promoting is successful because we're different. Number three will be to have big goals. Well, that's kind of covered by the five ways because let's be honest, if we're stretching for a 46% growth in revenue and a 61% growth in profit, we've got big, hairy, audacious goals and we need a stretch. We need to be stretching because we've given up being modest and timid when we're working with a coach. We're looking to be really stretched to reach the level that's beyond us and beyond there. So big goals. Fourth is having a business plan to support those big goals. And it needs to be written down. It needs to be something we understand and we believe in. So a written business plan that details exactly what we're going to do in our marketing, in our sales conversion and so on to hit those goals, those 10% improvements. Number five is to back it up with a guarantee of some kind. In my case, uh, I simply, I keep it dead simple. We've got a business plan and we've got a set of predicted results at the six month point. And I guarantee the six month incremental profit that we're shooting for. So the business plan that me and my client are locked into, I'm guaranteeing their results. I have a hand in the assumptions, I'm party to the planning, so why would I not be confident if I'm coaching them well enough that we can hit that result? So that six month net profit guarantee isn't just a whim, it's actually a legally binding deed. It's separate to our legal agreement with our client, the standard agreement, and this obliges me to hit that number, or if we can't achieve it, to coach for free until we do. It really makes me stand out from the crowd, and it is a USP. A couple of things to finish off on, in terms of other things that are needed to be a really successful business. Let's just go back to this concept of measuring and testing. It's too easy to avoid um, scrutinizing yourself and your results. It's easy just to push them to one side and say it doesn't matter, oh, I know what they are. No, you don't. If you ain't recording your goals, and if you ain't recording your results, then you don't really know how well you're doing. If you don't know well how you're doing, how on earth can you run the business effectively? 
but it is a discipline and it is painful because the other results are sometimes acutely embarrassing and difficult to digest. But the scrutiny and the pain actually makes you do better. So measuring and testing or testing and measuring, whichever way you want to refer to it, whichever comes first, is an absolutely vital business goal. And it needs to be done and it needs to be done routinely and it cannot be avoided. Final thing, final thing. If you asked a, a typical person in business to write down a task list, they could do the top 10 tasks. What I want to do is to get them to split those top 10 tasks into four quadrants. I'm looking for them to be working on high value activity. So I want things that are highly important and low in urgency. I accept there'll be some things that are highly important that perhaps have got a degree of urgency because they haven't been dealt with. Let's call those the essentials. But I don't accept that the distractions and the delusions of highly urgent but low value, low important activities should be on our wish list or on our working list of things to do. They should be scratched from the task list of the owner. We should be focusing solely on high value activity. My name is Lee Dickinson and I'm a coach in the southeast of England with Action Coach. I look forward to speaking with you.